display is just around the corner. You've got the cooler temperatures. The leaves are going to start changing soon. Ah, but do you know what else is this time of year? It is baby copperhead season. Jessica Hill is the executive director and lead wildlife rehabilitator at Carolina Reptile Center. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. We should first let people know that there is no snake in no. this bucket. <laughs> we, <laughs> we thought maybe it wasn't a good idea to bring a baby copperhead to the studio. But I want you, before we get into copperheads, mm -hmm. to tell me a little bit about the um, Carolina Reptile Center. Yeah, so we're a 501c3 um, nonprofit where we rescue and rehabilitate native wildlife, but we specialize in reptiles and amphibians, particularly uh, snakes. We also do relocation um, for people in need in the community, and we do educational events. Let's talk about copperheads, in particular, okay. baby copperhead season. Yeah. Why is this the time that we start to see the babies? Yeah, so, um, well, first off, female copperheads are gonna give birth to live young. They can give anywhere from between two to 18 babies at a time. So it's not eggs? No, it is not eggs. So if you ever come across eggs, you don't have to worry about them being baby copperheads. Um, and most of these babies, unfortunately, will not make it to adulthood. Um, and they're typically born between uh, late August, early September. Sometimes you'll see them at the beginning of October, mid-August, but that's generally the time frame. I've always heard, and you either tell me it's right or debunk the, the, the myth, but that baby copperheads are more dangerous than grown-up copperheads. That is absolutely not true. Okay, that is me. a complete myth. Yeah. Uh, so baby copperheads, while they might be less likely to withhold the amount of venom that they have, um, and that's a big mite, they also don't have as much venom as an adult copperhead. They have much smaller venom glands, so that is absolutely not true. How do we identify a copperhead? We see an image right there on the screen. I never mm -hmm. know. I always am like, I'm just going to assume it is a copperhead unless it's a black snake. Yeah. But how do we identify a copperhead? Yeah, so there, there can be variation to color and pattern, which is why we recommend joining a snake identification group on uh, Facebook, like the NC Wild Snake ID and Education. Um, but generally speaking, copperheads are going to be, they're going to have a copperhead. They're going to be brownish in color. Um, and they're going to have cross bands, like a dark chestnut cross band that goes across their back. It'll be thinner in the middle and get wider at the sides. Um, and from the side, you're gonna see that Hershey kiss uh, pattern that everyone is known for, so. Um, are the babies, do the babies look exactly the same as mommies and daddies? Uh, yes, so babies do look exactly like the uh, parents. However, what you're gonna notice with baby copperheads is they have a yellowish or greenish tip on the end of their tail mm. um, that they use as a lure to catch prey. So this is really important because so many of our harmless species are killed, like our DK's brown snake, um, because people think they're baby copperheads. They are not, so look for that tip on the tail. So you, listen, I think, you know, so many people, your, your instinct is to kill a snake. Mm -hmm. What do we do if we see a baby copperhead or an adult copperhead in our yard? That's a great question. Um, the best thing that you can do, honestly, is give them their space. Leave them alone, okay? Uh, snakes are not aggressive. They are not out to hurt you. Usually when you stumble across a snake, they're just as scared as you are. They're hoping they're going to probably sit there and hope that you leave them alone if they don't try to escape. Now, obviously, if you're posing an active threat to the animal, it's going to try to defend itself, right? Who wouldn't? If someone's posing a threat to me, um, I would defend myself, too. What, um, how dangerous is a copperhead's bite, and what should we do if we do get bitten by a copperhead? If it's a mistake, okay. you know, you reach into a bush, and there they are. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so while a copperhead bite is painful, and it should be treated as serious, it is not considered life-threatening. They have a relatively weak venom compared to some of our other native species. Um, if you were to get bitten, the first thing that I would say um, for you to do is A, get, seek medical attention, mm -hmm. okay? So seek medical attention, remove any restrictive clothing or jewelry because you want to think swelling, right? Um, get the extremity elevated. So if it's your foot or your arm, um, you want to elevate the extremity above heart level. Um, I, at least 40 degrees, ideally 60 degrees, and you do not want any bend in your elbow or your knee. Um, and then also join the National Snake Bite Support Group. Those are the leading doctors and experts in the field, um, and they'll be able to get you help. But when it comes to, I want to answer this too, how dangerous they are. Statistically, on average in the United States, there's 4.3 million dog bites that result in 30 to 50 human fatalities a year. Mm -hmm. um, copperheads, there's roughly 2,920 bites a year in the United States. In the last 29 years, though, there's yeah. only been five human fatalities and most of them had secondary factors involved. 
Okay, let's put all the information up on the screen. Um, we're going to end it on that positive note. So it's not as bad as you think it is. Just let them live their lives. Jessica, thank you so much for coming to help us today. We thank appreciate you. it.